I'm always worried about somebody coming in my house and hurting my family, but I'm always on guard and uh, I'm ready for anything at any time. I used to be able to determine combat zone and home, but now to me, everything's combat zone. And that's because of the PTSD. And if you got it, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. I joined the Army in May of 96. I've been in 16 years come May, and I've been on four deployments. Well, the cop that I was at, it was called uh, Combat Outpost Tonica Miracle. We were down in the Garn Hall Valley, surrounded by mountains, and over to the left-hand side of us where I was, uh, my motor pool was at, it was Pakistan. And every day was a fight for survival. You just didn't know when it was coming, but you knew it was coming. First of May, I got a briefing around 11.30 on what was gonna happen that following morning. I came back, briefed my soldiers, prepared for, prepared for battle. Uh, our main objective was to man the front gate. Anybody come through that front gate, they were dead. All of a sudden, we hear one whistle. First round lands on the left-hand side of us. It knocks me and all my guys on our backs. We jump up. The second round came in, hit the fuel, t hit one of the fuel tanks on the 22-ton uh, crane. The last mortar round, an RPG recoilless round, landed six to eight feet in front of me and my guys. It blew me down first, and then five to six of my guys got hurt, and two of them seriously wounded, and one of them being me and PFC Ricks. He almost died. My injuries, I got wounded in the penis and my right thigh. I took, uh, can't give you an exact number of shrapnel. And you know, that's my manhood. When I first came to in the infirmary out in Cobb Honaker in the Pesh Valley, I, I, uh, I just couldn't believe it. I went, I was hysterical, just in shock. And me and my wife were always thinking about having a third kid, so that's a no-go, it's over. There's a lot of things that come along with uh, severe PTSD. Um, sleepwalking, can't sleep for days at a time. When you do sleep, you only sleep for an hour or two and you're right back up for three or four days. Hallucinations, constant, constantly thinking about the situation that what, what was at hand that puts you in the situation you are in now. Thinking about and seeing the faces of the soldiers that either passed on or got hurt severely, uh, that's an everyday struggle for me. That's our cabinet, San Antonio, Texas, been 16 years. Me and my guys got hit by four mortars that are recording this RPG round. Left pieces of trap on the, that's being sent midsection. That, that was a really big help to be around other vets and soldiers that have been into a similar Circumstances like getting wounded or getting blown up and getting hurt real bad, we all could relate. And from the day that I walked in there until the day that I walked out and graduated, let me tell you something, that makes a really big difference for somebody just to understand. You know what I mean? What, 305, 350s? Yeah, yeah like two or three people call That treatment, being around those guys that have been through similar situations, it's, it's one of the best things ever. I used to blame myself all the time for them soldiers getting hurt and almost coming to death, but I also got to realize I was the first one to get hit, and I also got to understand and tell myself that it wasn't my fault because I did everything I could to keep my soldiers safe, and I was the first one to get blown down, so that's another part that keeps me going. I think that helps me move along sometimes.